Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, I'm Stefan. I'm CTO and co-founder of Gnosis. Uh, we started in 2015 uh, working on prediction markets. Uh, did an ICO in 2017 and uh, then started working on many different infrastructure projects, including the Gnosis multi-signature wallet, which then later turned into Safe, Gnosis Safe, and then after the spin-off into Safe. Um, so yeah, it was a very exciting journey. And uh, nowadays we're focusing on Gnosis Chain, which is a decentralized uh, layer one network using the same technology stack as Ethereum. And we're developing application on top of Gnosis Chain, uh, most prominently Gnosis Pay, which is removing the gap between on-chain and real-world payments. So you can actually start paying for your coffee with crypto for real this time. And yeah, I think a very interesting point in time in crypto because finally we managed to bring technology to a state where it allows scalability and also user experience, which is on par with what we need for like Web2 like applications. So we finally can build experiences which should allow us to onboard a lot more users, which obviously then allow many new interesting use cases. What role do you see uh, Safe playing in this space of like making accounts, making things more accessible for the users? Yeah, good question. So Safe started as a simple multi-signature wallet. It's very, very simple core primitive. It's so core that in Bitcoin it's even integrated into the core protocol. Uh, just makes sense from a security point of view. But with the innovation of SAFE, we also try to not only cover the use case of multi-signature wallets, but have something much more broad that can be extended to many different types of use cases and uh, applications and made it so core and basic and extendable that effectively we front run what is now known as account extraction. So today we talk about account extraction and that it could allow us to abstract fees and transaction fees from users effectively. Gnosis has been doing this since uh, 2019. <laughs> so effectively already in 2019, we had the first mobile application where you could pay with a different token for transaction fees, uh, not Ether. And uh, so we kind of, in my view, pushed the envelope from the very early start for account abstraction, what now became the kind of buzzword for the overall initiative in the industry to push for smart contract accounts to solve user experience issues. And I think the SAFE is the most interesting one because uh, by far most developed is the biggest ecosystem and the, by far most deployment. So I, my expectation is that the counter section will be driven around this core contract of SAFE, extended to whatever is needed to offer better user experience. I think the ecosystem is already quite big around the SAFE. So even today, you can start building a new wallet that allows to abstract a lot of complexity for users. It's not only about transaction fees, it's also about account recovery and how you can generally sign transactions. So we are already quite far. In my view, what is needed right now is great teams, they have great experience with user experience to just assemble the technologies that have been created over the last decade uh, to actually then offer a great product. And of course, the big question still is, like even if you have solved this onboarding, what are people actually interested in using? So that's, I think, also a fundamental question. But I think in terms of user experience, scalability, we have solved the core fundamental issues already. So now the issues kind of are only about assembling it and getting interesting use cases so people actually care. Talking about use cases, it would be okay if we talked a bit about Gnosis Pay as well and how that sure, payment yeah. use case it's now you know, being used by people and how that, that's going. It's an interesting project as well. Yeah, sure. So I think in order to, to get more users, effectively you have to build bridges, right? Like in the last 10 years, we have been building applications mostly for ourselves. Like crypto, crypto users and developers develop crypto applications for crypto users and not for people outside of our own bubble. And for us, in order to onboard new users, we have to build bridges to, yeah, to technologies that people are using the other side effectively. And I think payments is a very interesting use case for that. If you look at the Bitcoin white paper, it was actually introduced by Satoshi Nakamoto as the peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system, a payment system. Nowadays, it's very obvious, not a single person is using Bitcoin for payments these days, and even Lightning is not working really. Um, but meanwhile, we made so much progress on the technology side that actually now you have uh, like scalable, user-friendly environments in crypto that could be used for payments, but 
they can only really work if you communicate with the old world, meaning Visa and MasterCard, right? Visa and MasterCard are great because they have 80 million merchants that accept their network. We cannot build another network right now. We have to tap into what is already existing. And that's what we do with North Spain. So with North Spain, we remove the gap between on-chain and real-world payments. So you actually use our card to pay for your coffee anywhere and generally for anything where Visa and MasterCard are accepted, but with crypto that you're holding in your non-custodial safe. And uh, I think that's a very important innovation. I like to compare it to Skype. So I was one of the first Skype users back in the day and it allowed you to do peer-to-peer -peer phone calls between your peers, uh, similar to how I can do now peer-to-peer -peer transaction on Gnosis Chain or Ethereum to you. But it was first isolated, so I could not call my mom with Skype, right? But then they introduced something like Skype in and Skype out. So you could actually talk via landline with your Skype account and you could call a Skype account via landline. And, uh, we, and nowadays, obviously, all phone calls are done via voice over IP. So every communication is over the internet. And we have to do the same thing, but for crypto financial transactions. Right now, we have blockchain transactions, and we have like TradFi and real, like real world transactions. And uh, we have to build a Skype out, Skype in experience between those two, so we can start communicating with each other. And then effectively, of course, the goal is to replace many parts of the transaction that are currently done by Visa MasterCard with on-chain primitives to eventually have all of this actually being done on-chain. Fantastic. And how does Gnosis Pay exactly use SAFE? Oh, very simple. Every, every card, every Gnosis Pay card that you have is connected to a Gnosis Safe account. Uh, sorry, to a SAFE account. So basically the assets are stored in the SAFE. Exactly. Like the assets that you're spending with your card are stored in the SAFE. You give uh, effectively like use a spending module, we call a spending module, uh, to define how much uh, you're allowed to spend from your card on a daily basis. Um, and that's it. And why did you guys decide to use SAFE and not another solution for Gnosis Pay? There's nothing better out there, so I don't have to. There's no point for me to look anywhere else, obviously. Right. I think that's it. Is there anything else that you'd like to mention that would be important to cover? Or well, I'm generally super excited about the future of SAFE, obviously. I think we are really at the brink of a uh, much larger adoption of crypto in the wider ecosystem, or like wider economy, like real world economy. Um, I think we have been, I think SAFE has the best position simply because it's the most trusted platform. It's technologically most advanced and has the biggest ecosystem around this. And I see important industry players building on SAFE to push for user experience. And that ultimately I think will decide. Like the use cases will drive adoption. Those building the use cases, they decide on what technology they're building on. They're using SAFE. So in my view, it's the safest bet.